Hi, this is Bob Wetterman from Best Inc. And today's session is the final in our series of BGA Rework a Primer. This particular section will be on inspection of the BGA after rework has taken place. So we've talked about the removal of the devices. We've talked about site prepping or dressing. We've talked about how to place the devices and the methods available for us there. We've also talked about reflows, uh, reflow profiling, and uh, some of the nuances associated with that. And then in the last session we talked about uh, cleaning considerations for BGA rework. So let's get into the final section, F or 6, here on this outline, the inspection of the BGA. So the objective of after reworking the device is to make sure that the rework process performed meets the applicable inspection criteria. So we have to make sure we know what class the assembly is, if we're going to be inspecting to IPC A610 class 1, class 2, class 3, or we have our own criteria or customer criteria that we have to meet. So typically and by default we are using IPC A610 inspection criteria and we will if we are using uh, the first level of inspection, some kind of magnification to look at what's going on uh, in terms of the BGA itself. And we're going to go to the table in, section, in the beginning section of IPC A610. We may actually augment the 610 inspection criteria with those found in the IPC 7095 that have some great criteria with respect to other anomalies that we see during BGA processing. So again, we're going to go to table 1, 2, and 1, 3 in the 610 to pick our magnification. And uh, we're going to have to get in and look at all four sides. Now this may cause some difficulties as components may be close by um, or um, be very tough to get to if it's near um, larger devices and we can't see if, if we tilt uh, the board underneath the microscope on all four sides. That would prove difficult. So that's the first level of inspection. The set next level of inspection is an endoscope. Now an endoscope is a device that looks underneath the package. Again, unlike a lot of uh, surface mount devices where we can see the leads, in the case of BGAs, the leads are actually on the balls underneath the package so we have to see the, the interconnections. So the endoscope, what it tells us is what's going on in the first or maybe even into the second row uh, and it shows us what the ball diameter looks like, what the collapse height is indicative of, especially at the corners, um, what the shape of the collapse looks like, uh, the graininess of, of the, uh, the ball itself. And what we do is uh, we can have a couple of different versions of an endoscope. Here on the left hand side we see a higher end endoscope with front and back lighting and a variety of different magnification lenses that increase or decrease our depth of field. And then usually it's hooked to a, a more uh, sophisticated um, computer system where metrology readings can be taken and the like. On the right hand side we see a handheld endoscope that generally would just go to a monitor which is in the background in that photo. So, but both will do the exact same thing um, and, and that is look at the uh, collapse, collapse height, the shape of the ball and the surface and also flux residue that's underneath the package. Finally, the last kind of inspection that we would do is some type of x-ray inspection and most people, at least in the United States, have some sort of transmissive x-ray inspection, though IPC A610 does not necessarily require x-ray inspection, it is highly desirable to do BGA rework. X-rays um, do great for determining shorts, um, bridging, and uh, for the consistency of the solder balls. Now the two types of x-ray systems um, that are available are 2D and 3D or CT scanning. The CT or three-dimensional scanning, very capital intensive, you know, three hundred fifty thousand dollars and up capital pieces of equipment, uh, does require programming. But the advantage to this, and we can see this on this image in front of us, 
is we can actually determine what the interconnect looks like in the z-axis. So there is definitely an advantage to three-dimensional x-ray inspection. So let's look at the inspection criteria as outlined. So we may involve visual assessment only, and there we would want to go back to IPC A610 Table 1-2 to look at what magnification we want to uh, do the visual um, inspection at. And 610 tells us that process validation can be used instead of or in lieu of x-ray visual inspection provided objective evidence is available. Now most processes aren't in that perfect control and anomalies come up both in the materials and in the processes in the boards especially during rework. We don't know how many times the board's been reworked for instance. We don't know if we have fresh devices. We don't know if all the balls are in spec. But um, very few people that are doing BGA rework are not using the x-ray. So the outside rows are done and inspected through visual inspection uh, when practical. And um, we definitely want to see the outside rows that we're inspecting. And a absence of a solder ball is definitely a defect even if it goes to a no connect. So here's some main points from IPC A610 from the section on surface mount 8.3.12 and we have to make sure that there's alignment of the BGA to the board and basically for all three classes we just don't want any violation of minimum electrical clearance the solder ball spacing, that is the distance between each of the solder balls, um, again, the, it should be on the pads, but more importantly, no minimum electrical clearance um, can be violated. Uh, in terms of the soldering connections, we don't want any bridging. Uh, we can see that with x-ray, and the solder ball should contact and wet the land and be of the right um, shape. And again, if we use the endoscope, we can determine or infer that the shape is correct, x-ray will somewhat tell us that if there's an anomaly from ball to ball. In terms of voids, um, the criteria as established is 25 percent of or less of the x-ray imageable area. So that means we can easily do that with two-dimensional x-ray and we have to have present and completely cured underfill material. So continuing on on some of the inspection criteria and anomalies on BGA rework, um, we want the balls to have uniform size and shape. That's our target condition. And again, how we're going to do that is both by x-ray images and endoscopes. Uh, endoscopes, again, only tell us one or two rows in. Uh, the BGA um, ball shapes throughout the rest of the package will be determined by x-ray and, of course, the best a method there is CT or 3D x-ray. Um, we want to make sure there's no bridging and the balls are continuously elliptical, i.e. collapsed. That's the acceptable condition for all three classes. And for process indicator, if we have non-uniformity in either size or color or shape. And again, the best way to determine that is with an endoscope. So defects if we have bridging, that would show up on x-ray or visual. Uh, the waste showing paste did not reflow together. We see this here on this bottom right-hand photograph. We have a head and pillow where we did not see a continuous um, reflow of the, uh, the solder paste to the ball. A fractured solder connection very difficult to pick, pick up on any of these techniques that we're talking about. Here we see it on visual. Um, you know, sometimes you can detect a crack by different operating conditions when the device is being used, i.e. heated versus not heated, or when there's pressure applied to the top of the device, and we retain a connection. You know, or if there's no um, connection between the ball and the solder. So typically we're going to take an image, an x-ray image of the entire device and then you know, walk the dog or walk up and down the rows of the solder balls 
to see if there's any anomaly. So there's lots of different voids, um, and, and this is a huge area of discussion as to what the voiding criteria should be, and there's lots of different kinds of voids. Typically, the voids either come on the balls uh, as the de replacement devices have had them attached, or the replacement balls if we've reballed the device. Um, it can also come from process areas. Um, we can have entrapped flux or different outgassing from the boards. And what, what the uh, voids do, and there's lots of argument one way or the other, is uh, voids may stop a propagation of a crack, they may start a propagation of a track, um, they may not have the same heat capacity and current carrying capacity of a standard ball, so that could lead to a premature defect. Uh, and 7095 def defines uh, several different categories. Avoiding type A is when the ball is received. Type B is at the ball package interface uh, upon receipt, i.e. when before putting it down. Uh, type C is with the ball after reflow. Type D is at the ball package interface after reflow. And type E is at the ball a board interface after reflow. So we have these macro voids, big big voids that you can see, and again the inspection criteria in 610 calls for 25 percent or greater of the um, imageable area. And if we saw this on x-ray, this image here on the left hand side, we certainly would see a large void and this would be of greater concern only because it's at the interface, but certainly the 2D x-ray would not tell us this. Uh, the micrograph would tell us this, or the 3D or CT scan would tell us this. Um, these little planar microvoids, though are much being much smaller here on the right-hand side, are at the interface of the pad and the ball, and those present a greater concern because those could lead to uh, very quickly to um, non-connections. Then we have uh, other voids created by the geometries. Um, many times due to uh, heat dissipation requirements or other design criteria, we want to put microvias inside the pads without tenting or filling those. those are, that's a bad idea for rework, and uh, you can create very large voids at that interface. We've talked about the inspection criteria. We've talked about the types of equipment that one would use, again, visual inspection, via microscope, endoscopic inspection, and x-ray inspection, the two different types. And uh, we've covered a lot of ground in the section here on inspection. So thanks for joining us in this series of BGA rework, especially this final section on inspection. Thank you.